Welcome to the Legend Review. This series where I review every single legend in Apex Legends so you know whether they're worth playing or not. <laughs> Today we're taking a look at Ballistic, who was released yesterday with Season 17. And while I haven't had the time to play and call myself a master just yet, I definitely have a good grasp of how he works, where he shines, his weaknesses, and where I would place him. Before we head into it, for obvious reasons, we won't be covering things like the Lord, animation, skins, and other things that I don't think are super necessary, and instead take a look at what actually matters, his kit and his gameplay. So first and foremost, let's take a look at the passive. Ballistic's passive is the Sling, which allows the player to store a third weapon that can be pulled out using a bind or by clicking in the inventory. The Sling weapon cannot have any attachments on it, meaning you can't really place anything like a Kraber or a pre-kitted golden weapon on the Sling. It feels really awkward navigating the Sling using the actual keybinds, and I actually think you need an additional new bind to actually make it work, so I ended up just skipping the clunky mechanic and started pulling the gun out through the inventory screen instead. That being said, I don't think the sling is necessarily that useful other than carrying a third weapon while deciding which one that you would want to run. I tried running around and forcing a smart weapon to have on the sling, but never really figured it out. Packing a lot of ammo doesn't make sense, and keeping a naked gun into late game doesn't make that much sense either. But more on that later, as we'll take a look at his tactical, the Whistler. This little thing was a massive point of contention for a lot of players when the league started making the rounds. A tactical that overheats someone's gun and prevents them from shooting with an instant lock-on? Man, that sounds way too strong to be true. How could it create something like this? Well, it turns out it wasn't actually true. They did find a way where it's not really nearly as overpowered as everyone thought it would be. When you activate it and aim with it, a smart bullet will lock onto an enemy, but once you fire it, it's pretty damn slow. It warns the enemies that the missile is incoming, and they can easily dodge it by getting behind cover until the slow projectile hits a wall instead. You can place the Whistler on a surface ahead of time, after which it will attach to any enemy that steps close enough, but all things considered, if anything, it's mostly worth it to use it as a smart bullet. Also, the Whistler is a one-handed ability, so it can be used when you're shooting, healing, ziplining, and of course, when you're hitting like on the video. If an enemy is hit by the Whistler, they will take 20 impact damage and receive an effect for the following 12 seconds, where firing any weapon will add to a counter. Which, when broken, will deal 30 more damage, cause the enemy to do a quick hand wiggle animation, and then remove the effect. It's not a permanent, instant, stop you from shooting button, and it doesn't really do that much except be a bit of an inconvenience for the one affected. That being said, most players that I have run into so far definitely have no idea how harmless this thing is and will straight up just run away from you if they get hit by it. So make sure to abuse this before they realize just how underwhelming it really is. If you do use the Whistler as an opener, I don't think it's necessarily that good, but I do see one specific situation where you can get some really good use for it. If you're fighting an enemy and land a smart bullet, you will want to keep an eye on the heat up status right next to their character. If the thermometer turns near red or fully red, the enemy's own gunfire will pop the heat up and cause the damage and the small stun. This small window can be abused by you through wide swinging the enemy and dealing devastating damage towards them, while they can't fire back without overheating their gun and instead are forced to either hide or fall backwards, giving you even more free damage. Now, this is a pretty high skill at high game sensibility and it comes down to reading the enemy and the situation overall. And honestly, what I do like about Ballistic is that's something that applies to his entire kit, especially his ultimate. What's unique about Ballistic's ultimate is that it's all about enabling gunplay. Most new legends nowadays might enable movement and might enable other team play capabilities, but Ballistic is all about letting you output as much damage as possible during a fight. I'd probably liken his ultimate to Bloodhounds, but that wouldn't really do it justice. Ballistic's ultimate Tempest does a lot of things, and like I said, I believe it is the core of his kit, so I hope you stay with me. Activating Tempest will give Ballistic and his nearby teammates faster reloads, faster armed move speed, as in moving at about holster speed when holding weapons, and infinite ammo. In addition to that, the sling weapon that I mentioned earlier turns into a gold weapon, so fully maxed out with golden attachments and whatever side respawn decided to go with it. What is so awesome about Tempest is that it only has a 2 minute cooldown, so you can practically use it every fight, sometimes even off rip. Depending on your team comp, it might actually be worth it to pick up ultimate accelerants in early game to ensure that you have the ultimate ready, since the advantage of having a fully kitted gun early in the game when most players have nothing 
is just insane. And after having played around with Tempest a lot, I have learned a few things. One, it is very difficult to actually get value out of it, as you may think that you're invincible, you may get hard focused by the enemy team, you're putting a lot of damage out, but you're getting the same amount of damage back in general. It definitely seems to be a lot more useful when used off a flank, or if you have a high ground or a semblance of space to play around with. If you're being focused by three players at once, there won't be enough wiggle room for you to make a play. Being in cleanup mode also helps a lot with the ultimate itself, since it adds five more seconds to its duration per kill. Two, a lot of people's immediate thoughts when it comes to what weapon to keep on the sling for their ultimate is something with an attachment. The first one I personally thought of was the Devotion, or maybe something like a Mozambique or an Ori 45. But the thing is, the Devotion isn't really that good of a weapon, even if it's fully maxed. And using a hammer point gun is just honestly, it's a waste of your ultimate. After using the ultimate with a lot of guns, I believe that you're best sticking to the basics and putting something like a car, or even better, if not the best option, being the R99 on the sling. This lets you deal insane damage, get super fast reloads, and get around the smaller magazines that normally would be holding you back. Free, and sort of building off the previous point, I do think that if you do keep an SMG on your sling, that leaves you with a lot more opportunities for you to primary guns, I don't know what to call them, and in my case I found most success with using something like a wingman and a peacekeeper as a primary with the R99 on the sling. This allows me to poke and do damage over range, while at the same time having the peak and close range advantages of a peacekeeper. And if I need to fully commit to a fight, I can pop my ultimate and go ballistic. It's ballistic time. I could consider something like a sniper rifle instead of either the wingman or the peacekeeper, but I believe this balance makes the most sense with his brawler style kit. Four. And I am aware of what I said about the R99 being the best choice, but I do have to mention this. If you use Tempest with a charge up gun like the Rampage or Sentinel on the sling, it will actually give the gun a full charge's worth, and it seems like it even gives you a little bit extra. I don't think it is necessarily that useful, as a Rampage is decent at best, and the Sentinel is good, especially when charged up, but I wouldn't waste my ultimate on a sniper rifle, as you only have a very tiny window to get to use it properly. Five. If you're a ballistic or the ballistic on your team uses their ultimate, make sure that all of your guns are reloaded once the fight ends so you don't have to waste more ammo reloading. This is especially useful if you barely have any ammo in the first place. By the way, I just gotta bring some attention to a really cool quality of life thing that they already added. You probably will want to consider switching from your slinged weapon and your primary ones during your ultimate. And if you do, you don't actually need to press the sling bind itself, but you can actually just bring up your sling weapon by pressing the ultimate key again. And all in all, I consider Ballistic to lean into gunplay more so than other legends, and I think he's a great choice of a legend if you're looking for something that will enhance your damage and duelist capabilities without the flashiness of quirky movement techniques or you know, giving your teammates too many abilities. Like, who cares about your teammates anyways? They get faster reloads, that's all they need. It's worth noting that his hitbox is on the larger side, but it's definitely something that's manageable if you position yourself properly and stay on the move, especially abusing the movement speed buff from your ultimate. He's definitely super fun to play, and I'll probably keep playing him for some time. I'm not sure whether I believe he will be strong in a ranked setting or in a competitive setting. I can see a ballistic setting up and just dealing a lot of damage in an end game, but it's a very niche situation, so I'm not sure we'll actually get to see that. But as far as a pub stumper legend goes, he definitely has a place. And of course, I guess we can't really have a review without a score, so I'm going to give Ballistic a 8 out of 10. This is my first review video of the series, but I'm feeling like it's turning out pretty great. If you guys want to see more review videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comments so I know it actually is appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow. Peace out.